Please be seated. So we're going to read again from our um, Pew Bibles again this week. It's in the book of Exodus again, which is at the very beginning of the Bible. We had the book of Genesis and followed immediately with Exodus. Now you can follow along, you can read along, I'll make it your choice. We're going to be starting on Exodus 3. Exodus 3. So it's at the very beginning of the Bible. You go Genesis, the book of Genesis is first, and then the book of Exodus. And you'll need to pan over to Exodus 3. Genesis is a long book. It's got 50 chapters. So you've got to get through all 50, and then you get to Exodus. And while you're looking, some people are still catching up. There are extra flowers. First of all, thank you to Joanne Kotke for all the beautiful array up on the high altar there. But there's another... Um, set of flowers there from uh, Mrs. Mary Smith. Mary was a member here years ago, and uh, her son Aaron, they went, the children went to, uh, went to church here, went through our uh, Christian education wing, and Aaron died recently uh, in New Haven. So Aaron's uh, 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 service will be on approximately, I believe, October 8th. So please keep that family in mind. And uh, uh, we are also, of course, I want to announce Rick Harrison's uh, uh, memorial, which will be September 11, right here. That's at 4 p.m., correct. So let's, um, we're going to read from 1 through 15. Quite a bit of reading here. 1 through 15, okay? So Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Here we go. One day, while Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led the flock across the desert and came to Sinai, the holy mountain. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a flame coming from the middle of a bush. And Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but that it was not burning up. This is strange, he thought. Why isn't the bush burning up? I'll go closer and see. When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he answered, yes, here I am. God answered, said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have seen how cruelly my people are being treated in Egypt. I have heard them cry out to be rescued from their slave drivers. I know all about their sufferings, and so I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt to a fertile and spacious land, one which is rich and fertile in which, in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the per Perizzites, and the Hittites and the Jebusites now live. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now I am sending you to the king of Egypt so that you can lead my people out of this country. But Moses said to God, I am nobody. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? <clears throat> but God answered, I will be with you. And when you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship me on this mountain. That will be the proof that I have sent you. But Moses replied, when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? So what can I tell them? And God said, I am who I am. He must tell them, the one who is called I am has sent me to you. Tell the Israelites that I, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have sent them, you to them. This is my name forever. This is what all future generations are to call me. Amen. The end of the reading. So I wonder, do you have any pet names for God? I don't know if anyone's willing to share that kind of intimate stuff. But, you know, I think at times we have different names for God. We can be angry. 
And we can be quite vile towards God. We can be filled with joy. And of course, we can be quite amorous with God. We can be just in question. And we can be reverent to God. We can be in any number of situations and find ourselves maybe not naming God, but uh, calling God names. Um, right? I mean, come on now. And we can also, uh, at times, be, uh, when we talk about God, uh, t you tell me, what pronoun do you use for God? Hmm? He? Anybody else something different? Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. That's a little bit more of a noun. But what else? Somebody else? She? She? Okay, so in our own personal conversations or our prayer time with God or maybe in conversation with other people, we will have ways of referring to God. Yes, David. There you go. Thank you, David. So we see ourselves referring to God in, in many different ways. In... Um, in, in Hebrew, when they would, at least when vowels came on the scene, they would not include the vowels in any name for God as to not really, because they don't think they really could say God's name more than refer to God as in, in one way or the other uh, in different ways. But, um, you know, that's, that's one thing. But um, what we call God is obviously something that we have grown very comfortable with because all most people, and especially in our many of our, or if not most of our Bibles, we will call God Father, Lord, Lord. <clears throat> call using the pronoun of he and him and his, right? Okay. What's that? Creator. Oh, there you go. Cre uh huh. Somebody up there. I heard this funny joke about the somebody up there thing. Now that you just said it, you got me off a of track here, but I got to tell you this joke. So I went to a theological conference, or it was a class, and it was, um, I think it was uh, Bishop Spong. He's a, uh, an Episcopalian uh, uh, bishop, and he's very, uh, very sort of avant-garde, very, very progressive and such. And he was make, sort of telling a joke about, uh, about Jesus, right? So Jesus, when Jesus finally left the, the disciples, Jesus was said that he went up, he rose up into the clouds, right? Into heaven. And, you know, back then, heaven was just beyond the clouds, just beyond what they knew they could, they could see, right? So, you know, it wouldn't be too much. But with our understandings now of, uh, of the universe, the vastness of the universe, right? The funny thing, the interesting thing about that is even if Jesus was traveling at the speed of light, he has not arrived in heaven yet. <laughs> It's, he's all, he's going, he's still going. So we all got room to work with there. But, um, so this idea of Jesus, of Jesus and God, we refer to them in different ways. And it's an important thing, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I am most comfortable speaking to God, at least for me. I didn't do this always. But I have found the most comfortable way to speak to God is on my knees. Now, I don't always accomplish it, but I usually, I try to wake up in the morning, rolling out of bed, and I just roll right down to my knees and start the day that way. And then before I get in bed, I get on my knees, just like a little kid, and I say my prayers. Now, I have different ways depending on my mood of how I address God, you know. Sometimes that's God, sometimes it's a, a lovely pronoun, whatever it is. Um, I've been known to call God names every once in a while when things weren't going right. But that's what it is to be a human. 
We take control. We want to think that God should be doing everything for me, right? Making everything right. All right, so that's how I react. But those are the comfortable times. And I can call God in anything on the spectrum. I, uh, I use all kinds of ways of speaking to God. But my heart speaks to God just in, with love and with reverence. But here in this scripture, I think it's very interesting. And at one point in the scripture, this is a different, uh, what, what read today was a slightly different um, interpretation, but one of the other ones. But, but Moses, when God is speaking to him, he, he, you know, when God said, you're going to go do this, and Moses' re- reply is, he says, I'm nobody. And he says, who am I to do this? I think it's very interesting. Who am I? The way that phrase goes. Who am I? Right? And um, it's it's a matter of, and then later on, God says, you're going to tell them, I am who I am sent you. Tell them, I am. And it's in capital letters. I am. Now, we have this struggle, too, also, in the world. Um, church, the, the UCC church in Iverton is closing because people aren't going to that church. But that's not the only one. You know, I heard just the other day that the Westbrook Church, they used to have two services. This year, they're reducing down to one service on Sunday mornings. Wherever you go, even the big churches, fewer and fewer people are going. Now, is it because, what do you think? Is it because people don't believe in God? What do you think? You're lazy. Lazy, yeah, interesting. Somebody said, no, they don't necessarily believe in God. Distracted. They're distracted? Busy. Busy? They're questioning the relevancy. They're questioning the relevancy of what? Faith and formal worship, and David said the existence of God. Right? What's interesting, as I find, is at this point in the Bible, we see Moses up there. And do you know what happens when, uh, let's see, he goes back down from the mountain? Especially when he's bringing down the, the Ten Commandments. Do you remember, remember that part of the story? Do you remember what the people were doing at the the base of the the mountain? What's that? They were having a party and they, they, they gathered up all their gold. Remember? To worship the golden calf, right? Do you think we're the only ones who've been distracted from the existence of God or doubted God, right? Come on! It, this is almost the very beginning of our scriptural heritage. People have been distracted from the idea in the, of the existence of God or putting their hearts and their minds elsewhere into something else. It's no different. So when Moses says, who should I say sent them, sent me? He says, I am. What does that say to you? I am. Why do you think God stated that and why do you think it was in the scripture in that way? Any clue? Always present. Always present? Permanence. What's that? Permanence. Permanence. Call me what you want. Call me what you want. That's right. I am. I, I presume that phrase and that name was there to make it as simple as possible so that you don't get confused and worried about what to call the deity, what to call, um, whether you be uh, Jewish or later on, which wasn't even in existence, wasn't even thought about, was Christianity, or if you're Muslim, or if you're whatever. The idea that God is there, I am. Plain and simple. I 
am. Yes, Cheryl. Um, Exactly. I am. Yes, okay, so Todd. If, you know, Moses asked, who am I to do this? And God follows up with, when he asks, who are you? Uh -huh. And he said, I am. It's kind of like coincidental that you know, he asked, who am I? And he said, right, I am. Then I am you, I am everyone, I mm. am everyone. Interesting. That's a great, I love that interpretation. I am in everyone. Good. I like that. Thank you, David. This may sound a little odd to you. You didn't hear it. Who said I am? You're mine. Right? Remember that song? Yeah. Thank you. Our moments with Chris. So I am was uh, really, is in many ways, is an assurance. I am, and it, it might also then be extended with, I am mysterious. I am going to always sort of confound you. I am here, but. I'm not sure if you're going to get it or not. But there is something. I am. Lindsay, what do you want to add? Uh-huh. Mm, wonderful. I like that. It's like identifying who you are. And that God identified I am for all time. I am. I mean, scientists, you know, I, I have no problem with science, but sometimes scientists have a problem with, with religion. Sometimes. Not all. And the problem with, we find an answer, and all of a sudden, a generation later, we find a new answer, right? That answer just keeps on getting different and more complex, or even more simple, maybe even. It seems like the ancients were not so... And God, at that, with that conversation, we're not so, um, I don't know, unscientific at all. You know, as if they hadn't struggled their entire lives with the mysteries of the earth and of life and death. They were very powerful people, just like us. I am. Maybe all that we got but it sounds pretty comfortable to me. So I hope that's something that you can carry with you, this idea of I am. And just live in that, especially in hard times, especially in good times. I am. May the Lord be with you. Let us